We really find that forest regeneration is critical for the sustainability of tomorrow's forest. In order to maintain the resiliency of our forest, it is critical that we have young trees, seedlings, and saplings filling in those gaps that are created by disturbances in the future. Forest regeneration is imperative uh, for quality habitat for a number of birds that need that regenerating forest, that young forest, uh, for their nesting habitat. Um, their populations are declining significantly. Birds that use that habitat type because we just don't have a lot of that forest age class, that young forest age class uh, throughout New York. Much of New York and the Northeast is known as the second generation forest. And today we're at a critical turning point in the future of our forests where we want to take these aging forests and replace them with a new generation of young forests that's as good or better than what's currently growing here. Over the last 20 years, as, as we have managed in these, these forests, there have been challenges that we've encountered through overabundant deer populations and the presence of interfering vegetation. Deer are our largest management challenge here on the Arnott and across much of the northeastern forest landscape. Deer selectively browse many of the tree species seedlings that we consider the trees that we want to grow in our future forests. Species like oak and maple and cherry and ash and birch. So these are valuable species. They're important to us because they're, they create the diversity of the forest. But when deer eat them, they diminish in the forest. And by not eating other species, such as American beech and hop hornbeam, those species flourish and they create dense shade. Without managing the deer problem, we're not able to regenerate our woodlands. Hunting by itself is not effective as a, as a total control mechanism. We need to be able to exclude deer, not just limit the abundance of deer. One of the challenges of fencing is it's very expensive to install, and then it's expensive to maintain and to monitor, and then eventually there's a cost that you have to remove that fence from the forest. Well, we came up with the idea of using slash, the, the low value, non-merchantable or largely non-merchantable material that is part of a harvest, piling it at the perimeter so that we would uh, be able to exclude deer. Behind me is a 150 acre seed tree regeneration harvest. We are enclosing this harvest in a slash wall it's a structure roughly 10 feet high, roughly 20 feet wide at the base, and it's designed to keep deer out of this area that we want to grow the next generation of trees back. We're not aware that this has been used in the Northeast um, or even anywhere in hardwood forest management. So it's a novel concept, and we've been able to start a project where we can monitor and assess the effectiveness of the slash wall to exclude deer and, and to measure how the forest community responds to those, to the absence of deer and the regrowth of the forest. We've been building slash walls here on the Arnott Forest since the spring of 2017. In that time, we've completed now about 250 acres of slash walls, and we have another 250 acres that will be completed here in the near future. We've, what we've seen so far with slash walls over the past few years is that slash walls can be built on a wide range of terrain, even some pretty rough terrain. Even in these most challenging situations, th these slash walls have been effective in keeping deer out of the areas that we're trying to grow back young trees. We are really excited about the success that we've found with slash walls. We've seen uh, seedling height growth inside the slash wall that's anywhere from 20% more compared to outside, up to 12 times better growth on seedlings inside than outside those slash walls. It's pretty amazing the amount of growth that uh, small seedlings and saplings can put on in just a short period of time when not heavily browsed by um, deer in intense situations. I'm a little surprised it works as well as it does. And it seems something that uh, is in the cost range for many landowners. 
it looks like there's a lot of trees and a lot of volume in these walls. When you take a closer look, you see that these trees are often either too small, such as these little three and four and five inch stems to really be commercially viable, or they're trees that have a significant amount of decay or curves or defect or limbs. And consequently, the opportunity cost for us to put this wood in the wall instead of putting it on a truck is, is very minimal. I think what excites me the most is it's another option to um, better protect our forests from deer, overabundant deer impacts. But we have birds benefiting from this young forest habitat regenerating as a result of the seed tree cut. Um, they'll use this for nesting habitat, but we have the mature forest birds benefiting as well. They're gonna nest in the mature forest, but they're gonna forage during the nesting season in this young forest habitat because it's so abundant in insects and berries and other food resources that they need. Cornell's research across the board has really impressed me, especially at Arnott, where they are testing and researching the slash wall um, at effectively uh, you know, excluding deer and improving forest regeneration. So we really uh, value our kind of partnership and working with Cornell and getting expert advice from them. And I see the research here at Arnott Forest is kind of critical and kind of paving the way for the sustainability of uh, the future of forestry and all the challenges that it might face from a multitude of stressors.